I was brought to believe that education or learning process is very important. And this led me to be interested on the topic, Academic Resilience of Selected K-12 Graduates in Iloilo City, Philippines. This may bring up a number of questions from you, and I want to let you know that I will address as much as I can in the time we have today. I am Mrs. Evelyn Sibilia Dominguez, an assistant professor at the University of San Agustin, while Mr. Christy S. Sumbilia is an educator from Schools of Division of Iloilo, Department of Education. Education has always been a top priority in every Filipino family. For them, especially the poor, there is a deep regard for learning, which they view as a primary avenue for upward social and economic mobility. The Philippine education system went through a major transformation in 2012 with the implementation of the kindergarten to grade 12 curriculum. One of the salient features of this new curriculum is the additional two years senior high school where students choose specialization of their interests and attitudes. The addition of two more years of high school has elicited different responses and reactions among the learners and their parents. For some, it is beneficial since learners will be prepared not only for college, but also for a post-college life and future employment possibilities. For others, however, it is a burden since two additional years of high school also entails additional expenses, additional time, and extra work. Despite the country's educational system changes, the learners maintain a positive disposition in everyday living. As such, resilience as a desirable and advantageous quality. As neatly defined by Waxman, resiliency refers to factors and processes that limit negative behaviors associated with stress and result in adaptive outcomes in the presence of adversity. Resiliency behavior is universal and is not restricted to adults only. It is also applicable to senior high school learners as well. This study does not claim to explain all the elements of resilience, but it aims to describe the extent of academic resilience among K-12 graduates taking tertiary courses which are not aligned to their strand in selected universities in Iloilo City, Philippines. This study will further provide data on the following research questions. What academic preparation did the K-12 graduates possess before taking tertiary courses not aligned with their track or strand in selected universities in Iloilo City? What do K-12 graduates identify as life challenges and hindrances across their tertiary course? How did K-12 graduates deal with challenges and hindrances throughout the learning process? What supports or services are most useful or beneficial in promoting their resilience and well-being? The qualitative analysis of the data was used, including the practical steps involved in the analysis. The researchers analyzed the data into generative themes and described individually. For possibly selected K-12 graduates were the participants for this study. This is to ensure that data is pulled from learners taking college courses not aligned to their senior high school preparations. The researchers developed the interview guide on categories based on the research questions. The interview guide is composed of open-ended questions, but inciting follow-up questions are expected. The researchers secured full informed consent from the participants before participation in the research through the provision of information sheets containing a description of the interview process and an explanation of their rights as participants. The recorded one-on-one -on -one interview was carefully transcribed into written text. To prevent ethical incongruence, pseudonyms were used to protect the respondent's identity. The analysis of narratives was used to generate themes, to create order out of the different patterns and commonalities of participants' expressions, 
the researchers used coding process. Lastly, after the results were drawn, all copies of recordings of the primary data gathered were destroyed. Four themes emerged during the analytic process, offering descriptive and personal account of the participants' experiences on their senior high school academic preparation, life challenges and hindrances, coping mechanism, and support or services needed. These were coping problems, various life challenges, positive coping mechanism, and social support and services. According to the participants, their academic preparations, which were not aligned with their college courses, turned out to be a source of their coping problems. The participants had to deal with complicated factors that played roles in their learning process as follows, study skills, curricular concerns, family, friends and peers, school's culture, concern with teachers and technology development. They were greatly impacted by the learning environment. Similarly, the participants had to deal with adjusting to new surroundings. As Nicholson and West in 1989 cited that the core task of this stage is to reach a consonant relationship between the self and the environment by melding our behaviors to fit the requirements of the context. May I present to you the narrative example of the concrete adaptation to the environment of the participant. The next point is that participants reported that transition to college is challenging. There is a maze of matters to figure out, such as which courses to take, who to get to know, where to go for this or that. They also identified various life challenges such as time management, academic pressure, distance from home to school, academic competition, and new learning environment. May I give you the narrative example of life challenges a participant experience of his college life. Of course, we must not forget that human nature wanted to survive in times of adversities. In this study, each of the participants cope with adjustment problems in different ways. The study found that the coping mechanisms utilized by the learners were similar and are considered positive. The participants employed positive coping mechanisms in dealing with their adjustment problems, such as seeking help from friends, thinking in a goal-oriented way, exerting effort, enlisting social support, seeking professional help, scholarship, and tutorial program. Please note the narrative examples of how participants identified their coping mechanism to their academics. However, it is important to realize that the saying, no man is an island, was true. We need one another in times of adversities. As Wat Toit cited in his journal in 1995, that social support and services have been found to reduce feelings of stress and enhance subjective well-being. All the participants identified their families, especially their parents, the school teachers, classmates and friends, who offer moral and financial support to them. When stress is too overwhelming for an individual to cope with alone, it seems helpful to use social support platforms to assist in coping with it. That's according to Bakotaya and Mai in 2012. May I give you the narrative example of the social support and services stated by the participant. Based on the aforementioned findings, the following conclusions were drawn. This were the problems identified. Study skills, curricular concerns, family, friends and peers, school's culture, concern with teachers and technology development. These were the life challenges identified. Time management, academic pressure, distance from home to school, academic competition, and new learning environment. After the analytic process and discussion of the four themes, it is important to realize that positive coping techniques alleviate 
the adjustment problems identified by the participants. The need to provide learners with meaningful support programs and services that can assist in their adjustment period and to address that need is necessary. The following recommendations are advanced in the light of the findings and conclusions on the present study. The Department of Education as well as the Commission on Higher Education may utilize the results of this study to help future learners learn the most successful ways to manage their adjustment problems. For future research, a broader scope of learners' resilience should be considered which include learners from both public and private colleges and state universities. It is also recommended that there is a need for future research that explores the necessity of reviewing the K-12 basic education curriculum of the Philippines. For future researches, they should include other factors like learners' parents, teachers, and peer influences in order to get a better understanding of how they influence the learners. It is also suggested that further study be conducted using other dimensions affecting the learner's learning. Furthermore, the study suggests that learners will be provided with meaningful support that can assist in their adjustment. The results of the study can have implications for counseling centers in universities to provide a positive support to allow learners to feel confident in their abilities and become more resilient. Also, the findings could be used to inform a review of the K-12 curriculum and the results of the study can provide important inputs on how to improve the relevance, attractiveness, and quality of education. If you find this paper interesting or should you have some queries, you can reach us through the emails on screen. That is... Eve Dominguez for 818 at gmail.com or Chris Sombilia at gmail.com. It's been an honor to be among such an accomplished individuals and to be able to present my perspective before you all. Have a nice day, everyone.